Hey. Okay, so I'm at church and God had spoken to me that week. I had a tremendous, exquisite experience with God. I was praying. Actually, I, I was praising God. I just like to, in my living room, certain songs that really touch my heart about God. And it might be a Paul McCartney song. Like, um, this is the way it should be. I, I sing that to God. I sing that to God. Um, Stevie Wonder. Um, all I do is think about you. You know, um, just songs that I love that I can tweak the words a little bit and make it in between me and God. I'll sing those songs. I'll blast it on the radio and just dance in my living room and just be singing to God. It just happy as a blue jay right so one of those times after one of those times i felt god's presence like while i was praising him and i uh started just praying and telling him how magnificent he is and how beautiful he is and how wonderful he is and there's nobody like him just praising him and he showed me some things he uh made me some promises he told me well he told me some things that he was going to do in my life and it was so amazing the stuff that was nowhere on my radar um because i uh i just never have been one to ask god for uh things i always asked him for his love i just I never had anybody in my life love me before God showed me what love was and I just desperately wanted love. And I thought that I was so bad and so dirty and so, you know, damaged that uh, he couldn't love somebody like me. I was further from the truth. I didn't know anything about God. So that's how I felt about him. So I used to just pray and ask him to love me. So anyway, after this encounter with God and he spoke to me and he showed me things about my future, he, he, uh, and he, he told me to let everything in my life go and follow him. Everything, like my apartment, all the stuff that I had in my apartment, everything, leave, just turn my back on my whole life and leave. And I did it. I did it. I sold everything I had as much as I could and I left. So this was uh, like a Sunday or two after that. So I go to church and I'm black, you know, I was in a black church. And um, so the praise and worship, uh, uh, a lot of people might dance you know, or just be exuberant in their praise, right? So I go to church and the praise is going on and I would sing and praise God in my living room. So praising God at church, you know, I'm right at home. So I got this wig on, <laughs> not this wig, but I got this wig on and my hair is just, you know, in these little pixie braids underneath it. And so um, I'm praising God and um, I I got up and I, I wanted to dance because I was thinking about all of the things that God had said to me, you know, when I was at home praising him and all the stuff that he showed me. And it was so amazing. It was so wonderful. It was so, it just blew my mind. And I just couldn't believe that he would want to do anything like that for me. You know, like who am I to God that he would just be so sweet. And so... The praise is going and I'm just hallelujah, hallelujah. Just, you know, and the band is like, beep, hallelujah, beep, hallelujah, beep. You know, so we just, uh, I'm just vibing. And 
as I'm dancing and praising, it got hot. It, it got hot up under that wig. You understand me? I'm talking about, I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is time to make a decision now. Either you're going to um, stop praising and sit down and cool off or bump this wig and keep getting your praise on. <laughs> off and had it in my head and I just kept on, you know, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> so I do it like this. And invariably, you know, the wig is just, I'm, I'm shaking the wig, but I'm, I'm not like shaking the wig like that. But you know, as I'm just moving and grooving, the wig is shaking. Now, I'm not paying attention to anybody else. <laughs> I'm not paying attention to anybody else. So I figured in my mind, I was like, you know what? If they are genuinely praising the Lord, then nobody, they're not going to be paying attention to me, you know? And people who are standing around watching, they just going to stand around and watch any old way, you know what I mean? So uh, whether they have something to praise God for or not, that is between them and me. And whether they can understand my enthusiasm or not, that don't have nothing to do with me. You know, like this is between me and God. So, <laughs> and God knew it got hot up under that wig. <laughs> so, anyway, I snatched the wig off and I just keep on praising God. So they, you know, the band don't miss a beat. It keeps on playing for a while. And then after a while, um, when I uh, got tired or when the the praise time, you know, finished and calmed down, then I went and sat down. So, um, or no, I, you know, went out, straightened my wig out, <laughs> put my wig back on. <laughs> And then sashay my little tail back into the sanctuary like ain't nothing happened. <laughs> so, after that, I noticed, you know, a lot of people just looking at me. <laughs> at church, right? People, I don't know. I don't know that I'm, you know, I, I would go to church and pretty much stay to myself because... There's so many people at church that um, they're not spiritually mature and um, you can get hurt just like out in the world. You can get hurt at church. There's a lot of demons up in the church. Um, a lot of people full of demons in the church. It's a lot of preachers in the pulpit full of demons. So I would stay to myself unless I was, you know, in some kind of group or, you know, like a group facilitator or something like that. My, I, I didn't do a whole lot of socializing. I never would get in the pastor's face, get to know the pastor, nothing like that. I don't want to know if he got a problem keeping his pants up and all like, I don't need none of those problems. None of those problems. When I go to church, I want to have an experience with God and really that's it. So I'm noticing a whole lot of people looking at me. <laughs> so, you know, I'm like, hi. So um, at this particular uh, church, my bishop had gotten to know me. He would see me and just little funny, quirky things I would do. I think he just liked my personality or something like that. But, you know, he just, he was always laughing with me, you know. So he, uh, he, uh, um, let me see. Somehow I was, I was having a meeting with him. I, I was about to move to Atlanta. And, um, so I was talking to him about that and he was like, Brandy, um, you know, you got a radical praise. <laughs> So I was 
was like, this look, it got hot up under that wig. I was like, that thing, it was either, I was either going to stop praising God or I was going to snatch that thing off and get my praise on. And I was like, and I wasn't worried about what anybody thought. And he just cracked up laughing. We both just cracked up laughing. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the story about uh, my wig getting snatched off at church. <laughs> Now, if y'all see me in public, don't nobody snatch my wig off. You understand me? You snatch my wig off. I am, look, now, did you see the video about my mama? I, listen, I'm one generation away. Don't play. <laughs> <laughs> no. <Nah. laughs> but anyway. Okay, so hope that made you laugh. Hope you had a good time watching my little crazy story. Um, you know, I gotta plug my book, Bedroom Secrets of an Ex Lesbian. I used to be gay for a long time, and God actually delivered me from homosexuality. It was a it was just like that. <clears throat> I wasn't in church, I wasn't a believer in the time. After I met God. I became a believer. You understand? It's like he introduced himself to me and it was like undeniable and he was so loving and so kind and so beautiful. <sighs> My heart just melted and uh, yeah, I fell in love with God. <laughs> so, um, but uh, before I had a relationship with God, I, I, was, I was gay. I was a stripper. I was a pothead. I was. <laughs> Don't judge me. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> um, so I wrote the book Bedroom Secrets of an Ex Lesbian because when I was in the life, in that lifestyle, there were so many women that were there just because they were tired of one-sided relationships with men where uh, uh, they weren't getting their emotional needs met. A lot of times, financially, it was terrible too. Lack of communication, lack of accountability, all that kind of stuff. And then romantically, never had an orgasm. Never had an orgasm. I was married for four years before I ever... Um, turn to women. I never had one orgasm. Uh, not with my husband. I I had orgasms through masturbation, um, and that was after I, you know, was having sex with my husband for years and noticed he was always having orgasms, and I was like, you know, I want to know what that feels like. You know what I mean? Like you're getting a whole a lot more out of this than I am. You know. Um, and we're both doing this, but your payoff is a lot more than my payoff. You know, I just get sweated on anyway. <laughs> no, but anyway, um, yeah. So there were a lot of women that just were not fulfilled in any way, shape or form through their relationships with men. And so they thought that, oh, just because every guy that I was with, uh, didn't fulfill me, then I must not like men. And it's no, no, no. A lot of times we pick the wrong guys, ladies. A lot of times we pick the wrong guys, you know? There was probably other guys that wanted you and you passed them up and you chose that one, you know? A lot of times there's stuff going on in here that we have unresolved. Is it right here? Oh. I don't know where my heart at. I don't know. <laughs> but um, last time we've got some unresolved stuff going on and um, we don't realize, but we keep on attracting predators and users and abusers and then we keep picking them too, you know? This thing is, it's a lot deeper than having great intimacy, but 
that's a part of relationships, you know, and a lot of times great intimacy, that can be the glue when emotionally y'all are having problems and issues or financially y'all are having problems and issues. Um, the, the intimacy can be the glue that can balance things out while y'all are having issues and keep y'all together while you make it through, while you transverse those problems, you know don't 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 try to bring the psychologist out of me okay you know what i'm saying i could go on for days about that kind of stuff but just look just get the book okay the description in the description there's a link to my koji page where you can just download the audio book bedroom secrets of an ex-lesbian by me brandy lee i hope it brings you joy i hope i was able to bring you some joy and made you laugh or you know something <laughs> But you have a great day, okay? Thank you. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with this crazy lady. <laughs>